New data released by an international team of virus experts states that genetic data taken from the Huanan seafood market in January of 2020 potentially links the illegal sale of raccoon dogs to the animal origin transmission of COVID-19, which would then support the theory that the wet market was not just a super spreader event, but where COVID originated from. Now, if you're like me and just only recently learned what a raccoon dog is, don't fret. Here to weigh in on these new findings is quantitative biologist Justin Kinney. Welcome, Justin. Well, thank you, uh, Brianna and Robbie, for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Uh, so we've uh, previously this week we interviewed um, Dr. Robert Redfield, formerly of the CDC, who uh, is one of many voices disputing that this new information actually points to raccoon dogs being the the origins of of COVID nineteen. What have you made of the the new reporting on this that that seemed to move things more back into the wet market camp? So uh, I should admit, like for scientists like me, it's been a pretty strange and confusing week. So last Thursday, The Atlantic published an article titled The Strongest Evidence Yet That an Animal Started the Pandemic. Later that day, The New York Times published an article titled New Data Links Pandemic's Origins to Raccoon Dogs at the Wuhan Market. Then a slew of similar stories in other mainstream media outlets soon followed, many strongly suggesting Salt, that solid scientific evidence had been uncovered that the COVID-19 pandemic was started by an animal um, at the Hunan seafood market in Wuhan, China, specifically that the pandemic was started by the, a raccoon dog. Um, the actual research um, study described in these media reports, however, um, wasn't made publicly available until Monday. Hmm. So um, the key thing that your viewers should know is that the research described in this new study is far, far less definitive than media reports have suggested. To put it simply, the new study is a nothing burger. The study itself provides no new meaningful information about the origins of COVID-19. No data in the study shows that a raccoon dog or any other animal started the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, no data in the study shows that any animals at the Hunan seafood market were even infected with SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. So what the new study does show is that certain animals were present at the Hunan seafood market right before the outbreak. Now, this was largely already known thanks to the work of Chinese researchers who happened to be surveying animals prior to the pandemic for you know, a different research project. The new study does provide more granular information about which specific species of animals were sold at which specific locations within the market. But that is it. There is no evidence presented in the study that any of these animals were ever infected with SARS-CoV-2, much less that any of these animals started the pandemic. So you might be wondering, well, what's this about raccoon dogs? So the focus of this study on raccoon dogs is a classic example of cherry picking. The researchers analyzed genetic material from 73 samples, all of which tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. But they then focus on one of these samples called Q61 because that sample had a high prevalence of genetic material from raccoon dogs. As far as I can tell, the only rationale for focusing on this one sample out of 73 samples um, is that the, the researchers themselves have previously proposed the raccoon dogs were potentially the source of uh, the virus. Hmm. Uh, so, they proposed this in a publication. So am, I, am I understanding this right? There's actually no... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm understanding this right. They, they, what we have what is new is this release information about swabs that were taken at a wet market. The swabs basically indiscriminately were swabbing all over this area. And one of the genetic hits that came back from testing the swabs happened to be COVID positive and also to have raccoon dog DNA on it. But there has been no evidence that there is a prevalence of uh, COVID-19 among raccoon dogs or any direct link between uh, the you know coon dog, a, a raccoon dog that was infected by COVID as the uh, vector of the uh, transmission from animal to human in the start of the pandemic. 
Yeah, so um, there is no evidence in the study in that sample linking that specific sample to the start of the pandemic. Now, all of these 73 samples were positive for SARS-CoV-2. That's because the researchers who um, obtained genetic information from these samples only looked at samples that were positive for SARS-CoV-2. So we don't learn from these samples if there was any association of any particular animal with SARS-CoV-2. The only thing we learn is which animals were present in the market. Mm. Uh, can ran, raccoon dogs, if it was the case that raccoon dogs, a uh, raccoon dog had COVID and passed that to a human host and that was the start of the pandemic, wouldn't it be likely that then ra- so raccoon dogs would have some, high, some likelihood of being able to be infected with COVID and we would have raccoon dogs maybe all over the world that had then contracted it back from human beings. And but we as far as I, do, do raccoon dogs contract COVID, do we have any evidence of that? Because other animals do. Deer there, in, in Michigan, deer have gotten it. Dogs and cats, I think, can get it. I don't know how easy it is. But uh, do raccoon dogs get it? Yes, there is experimental um, evidence that raccoon dogs can not only um, be infected with SARS-CoV-2, but they can have asymptomatic infections and they can shed enough virus to transmit it to other animals. And that, in fact, was largely the basis of these um, researchers' prior speculations that raccoon dogs could have introduced the, um, the, the, the raccoon dogs could have introduced the virus to the Wuhan market. Uh, you're a quantitative biologist. Help us understand how your background informs your thinking about what the origin of COVID really was. Well, a lot of the research um, on the origins of COVID is based on quantitative modeling of the early COVID outbreak. Also, a lot of the um, discussions of um, gain of function research that researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology are known to have been doing on coronaviruses prior to the beginning of this outbreak uses molecular tools that I use in my own research. Um, so I am familiar with both the um, you know general experimental methods that you know people use to. Uh, alter the genetic sequences of virus, it, viruses and research projects. I'm also familiar with the sort of data analysis that people do mm-hmm. of genetic sequencing data. So and I'm familiar the case, with the sort of quantitative modeling that most of these results have been based so on. So that being the case, what do you think is the strongest evidence for COVID origin? My personal opinion is that a, uh, a leak, a lab leak from researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology performing gain-of-function research on coronaviruses is most likely. But I should tell you um, that the origins of COVID uh, are really, they're just not known. So yeah, the fact is we do not know where COVID-19 came from. Different reasonable scientists disagree on this point. It is certainly possible that COVID-19 came from wild animals being sold at the Hunan seafood market in Wuhan. But it is just as possible that SARS-CoV-2 virus was accidentally leaked by the scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure.